God has created this matchless piece of art, the planet Earth, with great hopes and aspirations. In the moments of calamities, the God incarnates to rectify the imbalance and restore the balance. Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya. Book title: Vatavaran ke Parivartan ka Adhyatmik Prayog. Spiritual Experiment for Transforming the Atmosphere. Book introduction. The spiritualists believe that the entire humanity is like a body and every individual are like its organs that need to work together cohesively and cooperatively. Suppose the character and the thinking of the masses drift towards unworthiness. In that case, it will cause adverse reactions in the subtle world in the form of widespread disturbances, which would trigger natural disasters and other global calamities. In this way, the unworthy mass thinking and behavior vitiates the atmosphere and brings the wrath of nature. We may feel helpless against the nature. Well, there are ways to rectify and mitigate the situation through collective efforts. That is what the author explains in this book from rational, scientific and spiritual points of view. The world is witnessing one calamity after another like pollution, global warming, war, terrorism, epidemics, pandemic, population explosion, hunger, just to mention a few. The fears of impending doomsday scenarios are being expressed by experts worldwide, whether they are physicists, physicians, sociologists, anthropologists, mystics, astrophysicists, astrologers or others. On the other hand, there are also prophecies of this being a transitional period, leading to good times as well as the eternal promise of the Creator to incarnate whenever necessary to restore normality. The book leads us through the amazing journey to the bright future of entire humanity right from the causes of present-day calamities. The root cause is lying within the core belief system of human beings, some spiritual ways of rectifying the situation and thus becoming an integral part of the current incarnation's mission. Shakti Sanchar Sadhana, a yogic drill to receive divine endowments and using them for one's own personal good as well as that of the world, some collective spiritual practices for universal well-being and so on. Few excerpts from the book. The moments of the change in the current era are nearby. The lightning speed with which the evil within individuals and corruption in society is rising makes us think that the calamity of widespread destruction is staring at our faces. At the same time, we can find solace in Creator's vow to step in, whenever necessary, to rectify any such adverse imbalance. The divine authority who has given the assurance of upholding dharma and annihilating everything that doesn't conform to dharma is about to incarnate again to establish a bright future for all. The thinking and the character of the masses produces a reaction that influences nature's controlling authority. Its inner being gets perturbed by the unworthy thinking and conduct of the masses. As a result, its manifested form nature also shows its anger and rage. Let's think of the causative factors leading to natural disasters. We will come to know that humanity's corrupt thinking and unworthy actions would be at a greater fault than any foolish effort at interfering with nature's orderliness. This makes nature's controlling authority get angry, leading to visible and invisible adversities, problems and calamities arising and making people suffer. God has no birth or no death. However, the incarnations have been born and have departed. Therefore, they have been regarded as being among the Dev Manav or Divine Men and Women. They are Dev or Divine in the sense that their thinking, character and actions were par excellence. Avesh people easily succumb to greed and attachment and live such a life that they look like human beings appearance-wise but are behaving like animals. Excellence is heavenly and is itself what we know as Devatva or divinely in nature. Great people are like living gods on earth. Dev or the divine being represents ideals and manav or men. 
the aggregate of actions. The combined form of both in Dev Manav or a man of divine nature. They themselves are what we know as in incarnations. The Herculean task of transforming the era is possible only through the concerted efforts made by spiritually capable people. Only those people brimming with spiritual power can proficiently accomplish this task. We must remember that an individual's outer or physical appearance doesn't reflect what or who he really is. His real strength is truly his inner consciousness where lies the roots of his core beliefs and from where his dedication sprouts, flourishes and gets nourished. Without first refining the core beliefs and dedication, any effort would certainly go in vain. Refinement of core beliefs is the very basis of new creation or new construction and this task is only possible by people who are equipped with spiritual power. Man can refine his individual as well as universal consciousness with the help of his spiritual power and thus facilitate the realization of a new era which if we wish to sum up in one line it would be awakening divinity in each and every person and fostering heavenly ambience on earth each syllable of the Gayatri mantra contains the guidance needed to achieve that aim and realize that dream there are 24 incarnations mentioned in indian scriptures their common approach has always been to eradicate immorality extremism and anything that doesn't conform to dharma and encourage and augment dharma morals and worthy activities there is no dearth of people who actually believe in god's existence and bow down before statues and photos of deities but there is certainly a dearth of people who can be regarded as genuine believers anyone who refuses to accept the existence of god is not as bad a non-believer as someone who ignores the idols and divine conventions in spite of being a believer. If we try to find the root cause of all the calamities and problems we see all around, we will come to realize that it is because of the lack of a genuine belief in the divine. The worth of singing praises of God and offering worship is that it would help an individual realize that he is part of the infinite, omnipresent consciousness that he is one of the countless fishes in the infinite ocean of consciousness. Worship can never be worthwhile without having realized the said awareness about collective existence. It is very important to add collectiveness to spiritual pursuits, so to give them an added strength. Solo worship imparts the result that would benefit the worshipper. However, collective worship can impart illumination, encouragement and enthusiasm for the following goodness to others as well as it creates a beneficial stream in the atmosphere. We could read much more personal benefits from it than that, ex- than that expected from, an- from any solo efforts. With regard to the necessity of devoted worship, a question might arise in someone's mind that a man is totally helpless against the nature and atmosphere. How could he ever bring about favorable changes in atmosphere and situations? The answer is that man may be physically helpless and incapable of the atmosphere. However, the human consciousness has the capability to influence and change the subtle currents making them favorable. Few topics covered in the book are the moments of the change in the current era, the cause of current worldwide calamities, incarnations and their mood of actions, the vital role of awakened people in the current time, some personal and collective spiritual observances for awakened people, the crucial importance of collective spiritual pursuits, the ways these spiritual observances can have favorable effects. About the author, written, written by Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya, 1911-1990, an Indian freedom fighter, social reformer, Gayatri Sadat, and a seeker of science behind spirituality, authored more than 3200 books.